responsibility. Today I'm here with Paul, who's very excited about helping us continue our discussion about tug of war for agility. The last time we touched on a lot of style points and safety points for dogs, bodies, and human bodies. And after I completed that, a few more things came to mind that I'd like to share with you today. Um, one of them is the manner that the toys presented. When we're playing with our dogs in tug of war, in agility, we're engaging the dog in prey drive. So everything we're doing with that toy is imitating a prey animal. We like to say a rabbit. It could be a mouse or a squirrel, whatever the creature. It's a prey animal. Our dogs are predators. So that's the relationship between the toy and our dog is that the toy is prey, it's trying to survive, the dog's the predator, and he's trying to eat it to survive himself. One thing that I notice frequently um, with people who struggle with uh, getting good game of tug on their dogs is how they present the toy. So touching back on what I just mentioned about this being a prey creature trying to get away is prey animals do not have a death wish. Prey, prey creatures are trying to get away to survive. So when I see handlers shoving toys at dogs, it's counterintuitive for the dog to bite it. Dogs that aren't already thrilled about playing tug of war don't want to have these toys shoved in their faces. So this is a demo of what I see that would not be correct, would not be a good imitation of a prey animal is, there's the predator and the prey dies into the dog's mouth. You can see even Bolt thought that was a little odd. So when you're playing tug of war with your dog and you're trying to build the fun factor in this game, the toy needs to be escaping from the dog and trying to get away and survive. Okay. Let's demo that again. Here's my dog, he's the predator. Here's the toy, it's the prey. And it's trying to get away and trying to get away. And now the dog gets it. The predator gets his bite. So ask yourself if when you're trying to build tug of war with your dog, are you shoving the rabbit down their throat? In which case, it's a turn off. So think about that. It's not building the prey drive that we uh, seek for a good game of tug of war on our dogs. Okay, so tell yourself from this day forward, no more toy shoving, even though Bolt will still go for the toy. Prey needs to run away. Okay, on another point, things that I notice when I'm trialing and helping people are <laughs> develop an appreciation and an understanding of the difference between commanding your dog to let go of the toy <laughs> commanding your toy dog to drop the toy versus having a play release when you've worked as hard as you've worked to get your dog engaged with the toy and thrashing around and playing your little pretend game of predator and prey I don't want to I don't want to remind my dog that I am the pack leader, I am truly the dominant one in their lives, and take the fun out of the game by commanding them to drop the toy. You frequently will hear, leave it, out, some sort of a formal command and a tone of voice that means you better do it or you're going to get it, or there will be consequences. So I encourage everyone to train what I'll describe as a play release. It's a fun release. There's no consequences if they don't let go, except that the bunny won't run away and the game starts again. So I like to use, Yuki. I like to use a ready word. You can train a marker word, whatever you'd like. Often there's a little bit of a tactile com component to the release. I frequently grab my dog's collar and say, ready, throw him away and get the toy. I don't have to use the hand. Some people will come in 
with the right breeds of dogs, <laughs> not Malinois or Turves or any of the protection sport breeds. However, with the Border Collies, if you reach in and do a little like that, yeah, you get it. Pop their jaws, what we'll call it. That'll give you the toy too. But it's done very playfully. You're still sort of in sneaky predator mode and it's all fun so you might sneak in there and yeah, you get it. Along those lines, I, I want to mention, I do also have a very serious drop in. If, if my dog picks up a chicken bone on a hike, I'm gonna tell him drop and he better do it on command. But I'm not playing, I'm not training, I'm not using positive reinforcement. So that would never be appropriate when I'm training my sport, my game of agility with my boy. Okay. So to go over that again, any kind of a fun... Yes! Another point on that too is the rabbit needs to go still when you ask for that drop. Good boy. So I'm right now, I'm, str I'm the rabbit and I'm struggling and I'm trying to get away from the vicious prey predator and then I go still Okay, and he lets go. Again, you can add a little physical component, a collar to jack him up a little bit. That's cool too. So consider, are you killing the game of the fun factor in the game of tug of war that you've worked so hard to build by invoking your power as pack leader. I say not. Make it a fun game and stay stay prey like with your dog. Alrighty. Now another thing, Bolty and I want, want to sh sh share, with, share with you today is the nature of your vocalization. Just worked with some folks recently <laughs> Waiting there, waiting, waiting, waiting. And had a couple handles who, handlers who were very vocal with their pups. Vocal in a deep sort of a tone and growling and almost menacing. Needless to say, the pup was not thrilled with the game of tug of war. So I want to touch on that again and say, that when we're playing with our dogs, we are playing. We're not being dominant, we're not being the pack leader. So we need to consider not only our body language, but also our, the nature and quality of our vocalization. Vocalizing when you're playing a game of predator and prey, you being the prey, is that you need to be kind of a high-pitched, squealy, fun, tingly, uh, those the kind of sounds that would um, stimulate your dog to chase the prey. So we'll use silly sounds like and little shishy noises and little so all of my sounds if I do want to growl it would be sort of a very high pitched fun prey like noise. I would never come up and over my dog and <laughs> Anything I do with Bolt is fun. He's a fun kind of guy. However, if I... <laughs> he's growling right back at me. Good boy. Um, so... so uh, but if you are struggling with having your dog think tug of war is the funnest game in the world to play, consider the nature of your vocalization. If it's deep and insistent, and dominant and threatening, I'm suggesting to you that you lighten it up and make it a little more high pitched and squealy and tingly and fun. Okay, something else that Walty and I wanted to show you today is as you can see, let me pause for a minute and say, everything that I do with tug of war is to enhance and better my chosen sport. My chosen sport of agility. Um, so the fine points of my game of tug of war are that I am trying to get the most out of my play that I can to give me a better game of agility. So much of agility is about jumping um, and weight shift. 
So in my game of agility, okay, my game of tug of war with my dog, I want my game of tug to give me better agility. So you can see, good boy, Fulty's in a 45 degree angle. His weight shifts to his hind end. He's got his pelvis tucked underneath. He's right in reinforcement zone. That's perfect. That was perfect. Yay, very good. Super do. Okay. Oh, that being perfect agility, tug of war. Good boy. Everything I just described. You'll see some dogs that do a lot of neck thrashing back and forth. Bull doesn't do that. It's pretty much hardwired in dogs, whether they're neck thrashers or not. However, my youngster is a neck thrasher. Um, and I have chosen to teach him to tug in the 45 degree angle. It's kind of a sit. So I encourage him with a sit and tug and a sit and tug. So he's got a command that allows him to thrash back and forth when he tugs. And then he has his, what I would call my agility tug of war position. So if you have a neck thrasher, I will encourage you to train this, which is the dog sitting and tugging with their neck stable. The neck thrashing is pretty hard on their necks. It's not getting you better agility. So consider training a sit get it for your tug of war for the game of agility. Okay, one other point too is the last video I discourage you from locking your legs and bending over your, yeah, see he won't tug with me that way, over your dog that way, but rather have the dog driving into you, oh, oh I know, Mister. driving into reinforcement zone. If you physically, if you physically don't want to have a dog launching onto you, being mud covered all the time, having your clothes shredded, all of the things that go along with good dog training in, in my mind. Uh, there is a more civilized way to get a great game of tug of war with good mechanics for your body and good mechanics for your dog. Oh, can you um, so let me show you that. I, I simply ask for what obedience folks would call a sit front. So I'm gonna throw my dog away. Breathe. Okay, get it, just like that. So come in, drive hard, but sit in front of me. The toy's still in reinforcement zone. I'm still standing up nice and straight. He's still in a 45 degree angle. You can skip the part where they thump into you. That's most of the fun in my mind, but it's a personal choice. And frankly, as we age, our bodies can't take it. So one more time, a demo. Ready? Oh, he cheated. Okay, let's try it again. Throw that dog away. Okay, yay, that was a good one. Good boy. Good boy. Let's do it again. Ready? I'm gonna throw that dog away. Okay, yay. So if you're not fond of having your dog jump all over you, which I love, there he is right there, then consider training a drivey fun not too nitpicky about all the details an obedience person would be but a beautiful sit front ready throw the dog away sit okay yay i did kind of a hybrid move there okay <laughs> all right let's let's this this okay so there's a few more tips for you to play around with with your pup to try and uh, teach a better game of agility, easier on your bodies, but keeping in mind all the time, what is it that you want for the game that you play with your dog? Okay, that's all for today. And Bolty and I will see you another time.